So that's why we, it helps. The higher the credit level is, the, the more the motivation is being provided by the suspension of pay end of it, and the less it's being provided by dismissal, because, because we're going to get uh, princes, the governors up near the credit button, the trust button. Uh, let me say, uh, two points. To deter rebellion and corruption, the prince must be trusted. Uh, the, the, the randomization to stop. The, the, the governor in office can never expect worse than D, uh, or she'd rebel, or actually, she, she can never expect less than G, or else she'll be. Uh, uh, so after a crisis, she can't be thinking after her pen, penalty, she knows she's going to be penalized by Tau. It can't be that she now expects that she's worse than D. So the only way you can penalize her under this is, is by a randomization between dismissal and reinstatement. So what happens after the crisis, if the crisis takes her credit, you, you drops by the tau amount. If that takes the credit, you minus tau. If that goes below G, what you have to do is bring the governor to, to the court, randomize, probably you over G, you reinstate her as a governor at G, the minimal amount that a sitting governor can expect, uh, and not rebel after a crisis occurs. Or, with probably one minus U over G, you dismiss her, and I'm assuming zero represents the, uh, the, the, the value of being a, a civilian, going, leaving, leaving, going back to being an ordinary peasant. Uh, the, uh, I could just say, punishing ex, unproductively punishing ex-governors doesn't help. It doesn't help because the moral hazard constraint says that the governor can never expect less than D after a crisis, and therefore anything that you the threat that after a crisis we're so angry that we're going to take you in and torture you, uh, we have to uh, compensate you on the other end, in some other event, by paying more. And because it's unproductive, uh, basically what's happening is we're just reducing, uh, uh, reducing turnover. Uh, uh, great, you're just, having, you're just reducing turnover. Uh, by, by, by uh, uh, you're reducing turnover by having punishment, which enables you to have less, a lower probability of, of dismissal. Could, could be, but it's not worth it because you have to compensate the governor uh, for uh, as long as K is less than, than, than G. You, you have you can't compensate the governor enough uh, because you have to compensate. You have, sorry, you have to compensate the governor more, and that's more expensive than what you gain by reducing turnover. Important fact at the bottom: as the trust fund gets higher. Raising the trust fund would strictly decrease the prince's expected net cost because it's going to give us more suspension of pay incentives and less dismissal incentives. But when H gets large, parametrically, we can calculate the long-run steady state of the, of, of the uh, when the regime is new, new dynasty. I should say, what's a dynasty? A dynasty is a monarchy where the current, within a dynasty, the, the current monarch feels obliged to honor the debts of, uh, of his, his ancestors. New dynasty says that we don't worry about those those aristocratic promises. Um, but in the long run, in the dynasty, uh, when the new dynasty occurs, they appoint governors at G. That's what you do when you appoint new governors. But in the long run, these credits are a stochastic process. You can calculate easily its uh, its stationary distribution. If H is very high, uh, it turns as it, parametrically. This is not over time, but parametrically, we look at a sequence of kingdoms which have higher and higher H. The long run steady state in, out of the sequence. Has a, has a long run probability of, of, of governors being at H that's going to one, expected dismissal rate that's going to zero, because it's all suspension of pay, and that's good for the prince. But the point is, with high credit, low turnover, when the prince is well trusted, the officials are going to become an entrenched aristocracy. H being high means most of the time that they're being paid a lot, delta H plus alpha T and tau, and uh, they're never almost never changing. Notice, Aristocracy here is being derived from an assumption of equal abilities. Equality of abilities means that uh, common, there aren't any commoners who are any better than the, than the guys you've already got. So you might as well appoint governors to people who, uh, who already who already owe a lot because you have to promise a lot to whoever's governor, and that's easier. So the point is that large agency debts may in the long run become a cause of, of dynastic declines. So we're getting somewhere. Here's a picture of my numerical model parameters that I promised you at the beginning, and uh, what's, what are these functions? Uh, the, the, leader's value, the leader's value function as a function of the governor's credit is it's a strictly convex function. It's linear. In this case, D 
D is 5 and tau is 5, so uh, G is 10. Uh, G is 10, uh, tau is 5, D was given as 5 in this little numerical model, which means that if, 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 if a governor who was owed G had a, had a crisis, then she'd be owed 5, and we'd have a 50% probability of reinstating her at 10, or a 50% probability of sending her home. Uh, the long run steady state cumulative distribution is mapped here. It has a jump. I'd say the upper bound is 25. So this is about, a, a, I think it's a 65% probability of, in the long run of being up at, uh, uh, at the maximum and being governor being paid. Uh, this is the region of, of this, is the, this vertical probability drop is the, is the probability of being within one penalty of, of, uh, of, of the top, two penalties. Three penalties below the top is uh, is the uh, is the is, is the G where you have to start talking about dismissal when you drop when you so between 10 and 15 is where a penalty would cause us to drop below 10 and have randomized dismissal. You can see there isn't much probability in, in that zone uh, integrating there anyway. Uh, it's, anyway, that there isn't much probability there, and uh, in fact, this is three ten thousandths is the expected dismissal rate. Uh, the, uh, this is, this is the, this, holding all these parameters fixed except H parametrically in H, this is how the leader's initial cost. You get K from your first governor, who then has a value, a credit of G initially, appointment of the minimal feasible credit. Of course, I said it's strictly decreasing, which is saying that the prince would like to really use that, <coughs> that, uh, that trust bound, and more trust is, be is strictly better. Um, but Akerlof and Katz in the, uh, in, in, in the mid 80s had a paper where they said basically you don't need to backload more. Um, and the difference is what's different in this model is very similar to the Akerlof Katz model. So the deep, strictly decreasing is because of uh, why is it strictly decreasing? Why am I getting a different conclusion from Akerlof and Katz? Because they had alpha equals zero, which meant that on the equilibrium path, nobody's ever dismissed. Once we allow that there's a positive dismissal rate, and you can't cover the costs from the new appointees, you really have to, uh, you want to minimize that. And, and going to that, uh, backloading more and more with risk neutrality and no consumption smoothing that, that this, that, that's assumed in this model, you, you want to go all the way. Um, but I have to admit, it's not decreasing very much out here. But the reason it's not decreasing very much is because we're already in the zone with a turnover rate. That is, all that H is doing for you is decreasing the expected turnover rate. And once once the, the leader isn't benefiting very, benefit very much from, uh, from increasing the trust bound, it's because uh, the turnover rate in long-run steady state is essentially is, 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 is very close to zero. So it's, it's, it's the entrenched aristocracy that's, uh, that Prince really wants to be trusted enough to get an entrenched aristocracy, but then there's a dynasty declines. So I promise, let me do it, try to do it in five minutes. Uh, what, what happens, something very interesting happens, I think, when, when we, um, I essentially assumed that the cost of crises was infinite. Let me, let me add a parameter and take away a parameter. I'll just assume that the, the governors have nothing now, that the, the, the candidates for governor have nothing to pay. Uh, that's infinitesimal or zero. But uh, let, let introduce an L, the leader's cost of a crisis, and make that finite. And now I'll assume that the reason for uh, wanting the, the, the governor not to misbehave is because we don't like the cost of, of crises. I was essentially assuming that that was relative to everything else like infinity before. Now it's, it's a finite number. Uh, what happens? If in, in the original, so V is the value function from the previous problem. V of zero is the value of having an open office where you don't know anything. And you're about to point a new governor to G, but, but uh, uh, they could pay K, but K is now zero. But for that problem that we've already solved, if what you get is less than a certain number, which is increasing in L, if L is sufficiently large, this inequality will be true, then the solution is exactly the same. 